There's a question that I think has been on many people's minds. Does technology need a timeout? Well, I will not stand up here and say negative things about technology. I willingly and happily use it. I do believe implicitly there's a time and a place. So I'm going to suggest an app. <laughs> After all, there's an app for everything, right? But before you break out the smartphone or tablet, it's an acronym. We teachers love our acronyms. It stands for awareness, patience, and presence. We hear words like awareness and mindfulness all the time, but what do we do with them? I'm proposing an awareness and a heightened and broadened perception, not only of the world immediately around us, but much further reaching than that. Sean Aker, author of The Happiness Advantage, says, quote, our perception of reality changes our experience of that reality. So let me say that once more. Our perception of reality changes our experience of that reality. So you are one of 100 people in this audience, yet how many people could you describe based on when you first walked in? Maybe you were on your phone taking pictures, maybe you checked into this TEDx event on Facebook. Observation, not judgment, I checked in. <laughs> Point is, were you here? or were you here? So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have everyone stand up, please. Get the blood moving a little bit. Thank you. I'd like you to introduce yourself to someone new. Maybe share, yourself, share a couple things about yourself that maybe make you different from anyone else around you. As for me, I would probably tell you that I have a really strange obsession with heights. Hang gliding, skydiving, parasailing, you name it, I love it. So we'll have 30 seconds on the clock, and I'll give you a little bit of a heads up just so we can settle back in again. All right, ready? Go. <laughs> Well, thank you. I love the vibe and the energy in the room. That was wonderful. See, so hopefully you found you met someone new, perhaps someone whom you may never have met if we didn't do this exercise. The funny thing is, you've probably passed this person 50 times before today. But now that you're aware of them, you're going to see them everywhere. But awareness reaches beyond a quick introduction. It's more than an awareness of a physical presence. It's an emotional, intellectual, social one as well. About a month ago, my friends and I walked into a restaurant and the hostess greeted us cheerfully and said, welcome, it's Mindful Monday. I was like, yay, what is that? That sounds so fun. So she pointed to a basket and she said, well, we invite you but don't require you to put your cell phones in there while you're eating your meal. And then, as my friends and I had our cell phones already in the basket, she went so far as to incentivize us with a 10% discount on our meal. There was no need. She had us at Mindful Monday. Clearly, this is on people's minds. The next P, in our, or the first P in our app, stands for patience. At a time when technology grants us instant access to whatever we want and whomever we need, we have been conditioned to be anything but patient, and it can be a veritable challenge. You want to see just how patient someone is? Sit beside them while they're searching for something on slow internet speeds. You'll see how patient they are. If time is valuable, so we like money or commodity, then we can waste time. We can save time. We can spend time. When someone says impatiently, I just don't have the time for that, let's unfold that for just a moment. So you mean to tell me that you just watched four hours straight of Netflix, and by you, I may or may not mean me, um, but that we don't have time to sit face to face over a cup of coffee or go for a walk? We make time for the people and the things that are important to us. Sometimes we have to create that time 
in order for that to happen, but we have the power over what we do with our time, don't we? The second P in our app stands for presence. How do we teach our children, our students, ourselves to be more present? This is a gift from a popular TV show called How I Met Your Mother. It's a common scene among all demographics now. It's not just tweens, teens, 20 or 30 somethings. It's everyone and it is everywhere. Interestingly enough, about five, six years ago, it's my students who came to me to say, why is it that people can't communicate face-to-face -face anymore? Advances in technology would be the easy answer. It's technology's fault. But is it? Mary Meeker, analyst for the technology sector, was listed by Forbes as one of the top 100 most powerful people in the world. From her extensive research on internet and overall technology trends, she found that we check our cell phones wait for it, 150 times a day on average. Maybe that seems unbelievable to you, so let's break it down. The smartphone is a solution to the problem of having to carry a phone, a camera, a computer, an iPod, a GPS, a watch. I mean, I check my phone for the time, the weather, internet searches, social media, multiple sites and apps, email, and the list goes on and on. Now it doesn't seem so far-fetched, does it? On just one day, please keep track of how many times you access your cell phone because if our attention is here 150 plus times a day, then our attention is not here. Let's be more present. Over 50 years ago, intellect scholar and philosopher Marshall McLuhan forewarned us that the electric technology explosion had become an implosion, and he was not talking about internet back then, that new media create radical forces in our lives, kind of like radio and TV once did. The challenge is in understanding how to navigate these albeit unpredictable changing realities amidst these radical forces in a way that helps us to participate more fully in all aspects of our lives, relationships, friendships, school, and work. McLuhan also coined the phrase, the global village, in one single character, the hashtag, formerly known as the pound sign. Hashtag TEDx on Instagram will, all, will yield all of the latest pictures that we upload. The overall concept of the global village is the world as one single community brought together by various lines of communication. Each medium through which we communicate truly, as McLuhan posits, is the message. The medium is the message. So let's use our app to become more aware, patient, and present across intellectual, cultural, and social landscapes so that we can discuss the transformative nature of technology and its impact on communication. Intellectually, we are at the height of information literacy. The internet has opened up doors and windows of infinite possibilities, operative word being infinite. There is no reaching the end of the internet. It's just not possible. That is exciting and terrifying all at once. Do we just skim across the surface of the, of the information or do we delve deeper and become experts in our chosen fields and interests? Let's use our app to become more aware of all of the information available to us and more patient in finding the most effective sources. Top three Google searches might yield good results, but don't we want great results with all this information? And P.S., we think we are so good at multitasking, even though current research tells us that we are still at our best when we are focusing on one task at a time. Dr. Miller, neuroscience professor at MIT, tells us that when we're doing something like talking on the phone or emailing, Facebooking, texting, that we are competing. Those tasks are actually competing for the same exact part of our brain. We think and say we're multitasking, but we're actually just shifting from one task to the other. Let's hit the pause button for just a moment and process the information at hand. Now, culturally, we speak so often of diversity, equity, and inclusion. If I may, there's one all-encompassing concept, compassion for people in general. 
For if we admire diversity, if we believe in equity, and if we nourish inclusion, doesn't that fall under the umbrella of compassion? Over 40 years ago, Coca-Cola came up with an ad campaign. It was the metaphoric concept of bringing the whole world together with something as simple as a soft drink. You might remember it from the series finale of Mad Men. McLuhan's very concept of the global village was personified in this iconic commercial. From there, they brought together 100 young people from around the world, and they gathered to them to a hilltop in Italy, what better place? And they put a Coca-Cola in their hand, and they all sang about the world in perfect harmony. Oh, hashtag my people. The last line of the song is, it's the real thing, what the world wants today. What is the real thing? Only we can answer that. Technology has the ability to either insulate us from or expose us to what's going on in the world around us. On YouTube, there are these videos called If the World Were 100 People. Well, we are 100 people. So let's say we represent the 7.7 .7 billion plus people in the world. How many of us would have improved water? 67. Internet? Eight. College education? Seven. How many of us would make $2 a day or less? 43. You know I could go backstage right now and find $2 and change probably on the bottom of my purse, and yet someone in this world had to work an entire day for that? Just knowing something like this can make us more aware, hopefully more patient with other cultures, and ideally more present and grateful within our own. Technology gives us exactly what we search for. We become what we read and what we watch. Let's read and watch those texts that help us approach other people more compassionately so that we can find the commonalities between us. Then we can move away from labels and barriers and closer to greater kindness and understanding. Finally, socially, clearly, the landscape has changed with technology. And using social media as an example, Again, I'm not going to say negative things about it. I get to go on my phone and call my friend from Mumbai, India, or my friends from Bologna and Turin, Italy. That is remarkable. After all, social media is human interaction. However, I will say again, there's a time and a place. The language has changed. For example, the very definition of what it means to be or have a friend has also changed. It is up to us to decide how we use social media. Let me ask you this. Can our friendships and relationships exist without social media and virtual communication? Have we been so socialized into believing we'd be missing life if we stop socializing virtually? Here's a thought. Rather than complimenting social media with a little bit of life. Let's compliment life with a little social media. Ultimately, it's up to us to be self-disciplined in how we communicate and how we live. Long before the tidal wave of the internet, McLuhan warned us of the dangers and challenges of technology and its impact on communication, cultures, communities, and connections. Imagine what he'd say now Technology keeps advancing. With new technologies, McLuhan tells us, comes a new human environment. Well, we can create a positive new human environment. Let's think about this, and I mean really think about this. Do we use technology to be the best version of ourselves? And I don't mean the filtered version either. At the end of our days, at the end of our lives, do you think we'll ever look back and say, I wish I Facebooked more. I wish I Snapchatted or tweeted more. I wish I watched more YouTube videos. Well, maybe more YouTube videos. These are pretty fun. <laughs> if we use our app to become more aware, patient, and present, I believe life will have so much more to offer. More color, more flavor, more texture, more depth, more warmth. At the beginning of my presentation, I asked a question, does technology need a timeout? Actually, I don't think so. I think it is we who need a timeout from technology. 
Across intellectual, cultural, and social landscapes, it's up to us to use our app locally and globally. Thank you.